Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. Let's watch a couple of minutes of a CBS News story about climate from 1982. Then I'm going to discuss a couple of pieces of information from that story. Concern about rising temperatures on planet Earth heated up a hearing here in Washington today. For years, scientists have theorized about the dangers of the so-called greenhouse effect, the warming of the Earth's atmosphere due to the burning of coal and oil. And in recent months, as David Culhane reports, research has uncovered facts to support that theory. Many scientists claim that the temperature of the Earth's atmosphere has been rising over the past 100 years, that the great sheets of pack ice in Antarctica are melting at a much more rapid rate than previously. And finally, that the sea level has been rising with increasing swiftness over the past 40 years. If these scientists are correct, about 25% of Florida would be flooded along with low-lying areas all over the world. Climate changes could produce widespread disruption of agriculture. The American farm belt might be too dry and the wheat and corn crops would have to move to Canada. Scientists blame the odorless, colorless carbon dioxide gas for these potentially dangerous changes around the planet. It is the greenhouse effect. The gas allows sunlight to filter down and warm the earth. But like the glass of a greenhouse, the carbon dioxide tends to trap heat so that it cannot rise into space. The scientists maintain that the coal, oil, and gas we've been burning for a hundred years have produced more and more carbon dioxide and helped overheat the Earth. Now some political leaders endorse the demands for more CO2 monitoring stations, like this one in Hawaii. And they share the anger of the scientists at Reagan administration budget cuts at a time when they feel closer to getting definitive answers. We are not doing the kind of research that we should be doing to determine whether or not these scientists who are so alarmed are correct in their assessment. And what they find out will affect the lives and fortunes of millions of people. The very survival of cities like this one. David Culhane, CBS News, New York. Now let's focus on a couple of items from this clip. Finally, that the sea level has been rising with increasing swiftness over the past 40 years. If these scientists are correct, about 25% of Florida would be flooded along with low-lying areas all over the world. He said sea level's been rising with increasing swiftness over the past 40 years. But if we look at NASA's current sea level graph, they show sea level rising very slowly in the decades prior to 1982. NASA shows sea level rising very quickly from 1935 to 1950. Then they show a sharp drop in the rate of sea level rise from 1950 to 1995. And after 1995, they once again show a rapid increase in the rate of sea level rise. Now let's compare this once again to what CBS News said in 1982. Finally, that the sea level has been rising with increasing swiftness over the past 40 years. That is directly contradictory to what the current NASA graph shows. This contradiction makes no sense. Apparently, climate scientists can't tell the difference between accelerating sea level rise and decelerating sea level rise. These graphs are generated to promote whatever the current political agenda is. They're not accurate representations of the science. Now let's listen to another thing CBS News said in 1982. If these scientists are correct, about 25% of Florida would be flooded along with low-lying areas all over the world. If Florida is drowning, why are billionaires who are promoting global warming fears buying up huge amounts of real estate on Miami Beach? Few people have been pushing global warming fears more than Jeff Bezos, and he recently paid $79 million for a two-acre waterfront in Miami Beach. The home is next to the property he purchased this summer for $68 million. Together they total 4.6 contiguous acres of land acquired for almost $150 million. The behavior of people pushing global warming fears is not consistent with the propaganda they are generating. If we look at the longest term tide gauges, they don't show any acceleration or deceleration over the last 170 years or so. NASA's graph is fake and doesn't seem to be based on any actual tide gauge data.
Toto has been pulling back the curtain on the global warming scam for more than 16 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.